Hello and welcome to Rain Francis Art. My name is Rain. Today I'm pulling out the charcoal pencils and I'm going to show you how I drew Jerry Orbach. So let's draw. These are the supplies that I'll be using today. I have my black art paper. The brand is Arteza. This is 12 by 9 inch, 90 pounds, and I'm going to be using it profile. I have, of course, my charcoal pencils. I have my whites here, and I've got HB, 2B, 4B, and 6B. I don't know if I'll be using all of them, but I will definitely put a list in the description of what I ended up using. I have my blending tools for white and black chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> white and black charcoal. You can see what's on my mind. <laughs> chocolate. I also have some cotton swabs for blending, and I have a piece of wax paper to put my hand on so that I don't smudge everything, some paper towels, and as you can see, I have already transferred my stencil onto my canvas. Now this is the stencil here. Let me grab a piece of white paper so you can see it better. I created this stencil from a reference photo that I found online, and the reference photo is right in front of me. I can't show it for copyright purposes, but you can find this photo online definitely if you do a search for Jerry Orbach uh, portrait or Jerry Orbach um, portrait photo or something like that. You'll be able to find it if you want to use it as a reference. Um, I created the stencil. I saved it. I took a picture and I saved it as a PDF file so that you can easily download and print it out and use it to draw Jerry Orbach. The link is in the description below. Now I use graphite transfer paper to transfer all of my stencils because it's so easy that way. I love this stuff and if you don't have any, you don't need it. I do have a video on how to easily transfer your stencils onto your canvas, whether it's graphite or charcoal. So there's all that. Let me get myself all organized here. What else do I have here? Oh, well, I have my cuppa, my cup of chai latte, <laughs> so I'm raring to go. Let's begin. Now, like I said, I will definitely put a list of supplies that I ended up using in the description. So usually what I do is I start with my whites. And like I said, I'm looking at a reference photo to help me figure out where the lightest values are on his face. And this was a color photo that I found, but in Photoshop, you could do it with any software. I changed it to black and white so I could see the values better. That's, that's a really good tip, by the way, if you're interested. <laughs> so I'm just gonna apply the white charcoal in all the spots where it looks like he's got the most highlights on his face and his head. So when I pause like this, you, you know why. It's because I'm looking at the reference photo. I wish there was a way that I could um, link it up for you. Let me look into that after I finish the drawing to see if I can actually link up the reference photo that I used for this because that would be very helpful, I think. I'm going to say this. If you, you know, don't forget to turn your pencil once in a while so you don't wear it all down on one side. If it wears down on one side, then it breaks more often and you have to sharpen more often. And Let's try to keep our art supplies as long as we can because At least since COVID, I've noticed astronomical price gouging for lots of things. So, one of them being art supplies. They can't use it as an excuse anymore. You know, I understand, you know, at the height of COVID when it was really, really bad, people weren't working and supplies were, were in major demand. So, when there's more demand than supply, economics will show us, right, that prices go up, but that ain't the case no more. Oh, 
I'm just filling all this in with my charcoal. He has a large highlighted area on his face, his forehead, nose, cheeks, and underneath his nose and part of his chin. So I'm going to be using a lot of this white charcoal here. I may have to stop and sharpen my pencil. We'll see. Now why, you ask, am I drawing Jerry Orbach? <laughs> Did you ask? I assume you asked. First of all, I adored the man. I thought he was a brilliant actor. He was in my favorite movie. He played one of my favorite characters in a Disney film. <laughs> And I loved the show Law and Order. He was on Law and Order. What's his name? Uh, Detective Lenny Briscoe. He was on Law and Order for 12 years, I think. Like 275 episodes or something crazy like that. He did a lot of TV. A lot, a lot of TV. He did bit parts in movies, too. I don't know that he actually starred in a movie, like as the main, the leading role, you know. He was in a movie, I said my favorite movie, it's called Crimes and Misdemeanors. It's a Woody Allen movie, and, sorry, I have to just check my reference, okay. Yeah, it's a Woody Allen movie, 1989, I believe it was made. Martin Landau played the lead. He was amazing in that too. And Jerry Orbach played his shady brother who was kind of into crime and helped him out with a difficult situation <laughs> involving a woman. I'll leave it at that. But yeah, he was in that movie and that, that is my favorite movie. I watch it at least once a month. I never ever get tired of it ever. And of course we know he played Lumiere in Disney's Beauty and the Beast. I actually drew Lumiere. I'll show that to you now. <laughs> Isn't that fun? That's on uh, tinted blue art paper. I drew it with pastels and coloring pencils. That's why I'm drawing Jerry Orbach too, because I drew Lumiere and I'm like, yeah, I love Jerry Orbach. I haven't done a portrait in a while. Why don't I try that? Okay, let's see. He's got some highlighting. This is white. That's going to be gray. He's got a little, little bit here. There we go. Okay, we've got his nose. Now this area here is all highlighted, I believe. Yeah, okay, we've got a little spot in here. Yes, I'm going to plug my blog right now. Actually, depending on when you watch this, I have a brand new website called Rain Francis Creations. It's being launched on the 31st of January, and I can't multitask. Hold on, guys. That's dark. This part's light. I switched to my sharper one because I'm doing smaller details here around his eyes. And I am going to totally lose track of what I was saying. All right. There's also this little spot here that's white or highlighted. Let me get the eyes done and then I'll be able to continue talking. <laughs> right, so this is white here. And I've got a little spot here. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Back to what I was saying. <laughs> I was saying that depending on when you watch this, I have a new website slated to be launched January 31st, 2024 called Rain Francis Creations and on there I share 
recipes, home, home and garden posts and videos, recipe videos. Um, you know, stuff about my dogs and my home life. And I share my art. Every Thursday I host what I call T-A-D-D, -D, Thursday Art and Dinner Date. And this has been going on since 2019. And I have a lot of people who follow and a lot of people who join in on the art date. I offer prompts. Um, they're optional. If you want to link your, you have to have a, a blog or a, at least an Instagram page where you can link up a photo. Um, but yeah, anyone can join in and I offer the prompts every week and I usually get around 15 to 20 people every week who join in and share their food and or blog uh, art posts. It's fun to see what people come up with when you have the, the prompts, you know. That's how, the reason I started that was because I was part of a weekly, they call them blog hops, when you can link your blog on a link widget. There's a link widget at the bottom of the page. That just means you can add your name and your website and then everybody comes to visit you and you go visit them and we build a nice community of people that way, you know? And that's what I was doing before I started my own. I was part of a weekly blog hop. And, um, but unfortunately the guy who was running it, okay, wait, that's dark. That's dark. This is part of his shirt here. That's part of his tie. Excuse me, guys. I'm talking to myself. I'm just want to make sure I get the right. Okay. So yeah, the guy who was running that blog hop art date weekly art prompt thingy. <laughs> he stopped doing it in 2019 because him and his wife got just way too busy with their, um, their lives and their businesses and things like that. So I took over and I started calling it Thursday art and dinner date. Actually, it started off with as just Thursday art date with rain. And then it became art and dinner date because another blogger used to do, geez, what did she call it? Uh, food, food Fridays or food Thursdays or something. And then she stopped doing it. And I said, well, why don't I make it both? People like food, people like art. <laughs> Let's combine. So we share recipes too and, you know, new products and just anything that has to do with food and art, you know. It's, I think it's a lot of fun. So my long-winded way of saying that my prompt for February 1st is candles. And I always try to do a cartoon for the Thursday art dinner date. So I decided to do Lumiere. And I haven't put up a video on this channel for a while, so I thought, what the heck, I'll do Jerry Orbach. There you go, now you know. <laughs> Inquiring minds. Okay, so that's the white. What I want to do now is I'm going to take my HB. And for those of you who don't know, B stands for black, H stands for hard. So this is a hard black. And the 6B, for example, is a number 6B. The higher the number, the softer the charcoal and the darker it is. So a 2B would be lighter than a 6B. And the charcoal itself, the 2B is medium, uh, the 4B is soft, and the 6B is extra soft. Actually, the 6B is very difficult to sharpen because it breaks all the time. So it's very, very soft. So that's what that means. So I'm taking my HB because I want to have sort of um, a light gray color. So I'm going to be mixing my HB here with some of my white to make it a light gray color. And when I blend it, you'll see the difference. So I kind of have to go back and forth right now because I don't want to um, mix up where I have the really light highlights. And I want to make sure I'm doing this okay. So 
So I'm just switching back and forth here. I'm trying to apply it very lightly because I don't want to... HB is a very hard, it is really a hard pencil and you know, I'll admit I, this isn't the most expensive art paper here, so I don't want it to rip. Alright, just taking a look here. All around his head, above or below his hairline. We have, I'm going to move this stuff out of the way. This is all a light value of gray. I think already you can, it's, it's very recognizable that it's Jerry Orbach, even without, you know, being completed here. He was a good tough guy. No-nonsense no cop on uh, Law and Order. They did so many of those, didn't they? Like so many spin-offs. I started watching a few of them, but there were just too many of them. Uh, just going to grab my white charcoal, this one here, because I forgot put something in there, okay, just as a reference for myself here. See, I'm kind of erasing my, my tracing lines here, not tracing my um, graphite transfer lines and erasing them with the black, I like how that works. I used to use chalk pencils to get this value, but they're just, they're horrible. <laughs> I gotta tell you, they're horrible. They're so glossy and they wreck the paper. And if you start to blend, you can't put anything more on top of them. It's a real pain in the patootie. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start on this side over here. Let me check all around his ear. We have that light value. The value is just, you know, it's like the shading, right? Or the, if it were color, it would be the hue. Now I forgot there's a little white spot here. I don't know if I'm explaining that well. It's kind of the shade of black or white, right? If you put it simply. Okay, I'm gonna show you something if I can find my color wheel. Here we've got 100% black, they call that value 1, 100% white, value 10, and everything in between is a value of either black or white. So, you know, we have a darker gray medium, it gets it gets lighter and lighter and lighter until it gets it goes to white. So that's what I mean by values. You can have according to the color wheel, you can have 10 values. I believe I'm only going to be using four values today, though. Okay, did that make sense? I've got charcoal all over my hands already. Okay, now I'm looking at his eyes. So this whole area here. I know what I'm doing. Gotta make 
sure I don't it's hard to see with the bright lights so I have to make sure I've put I've applied the charcoal where I want it to go when you're working black on black it's hard to see sometimes You know, Jerry Orbach was in, I don't know how many, over 200 musicals. He is a singer, you know. Most of us know him from TV, but he was on Broadway for many years. He was an animal activist. <sighs> he can do no wrong in my eyes. I had a huge crush on him. I thought he was gorgeous. <laughs> Especially as an older man. I find that men look so much better as they age. I really do. I think they have a lot of more character, you know? Okay, so let's look over here. All of here. And down his nose, okay. And under his nose, okay. And around here. All this is, yeah, okay. So I know what I'm doing. <laughs> talking to myself. Actually, I'm talking to you. <laughs> okay, wait a second. This is above his eye, that's dark, and this is dark here, okay. Okay, that's a large dark area. This is a large dark area, but this part here. Okay. Looking good so far. Now I will just continue to apply my charcoal. I think it's all of this area here, all the way down around here. It's winter here as I'm making this video and it's, whew, baby, it's cold outside. It really, really is. It's always like that in, you know, January and February here. We had a nice mild winter so far, but I'm still going to complain about it, <laughs> if you don't mind. I just can't handle the cold. I can't handle it. Me bones can't handle it. I was thinking about Law and Order and Jerry Orbach, and I just remember he always had a nice scarf on. You know, he was a cop, but he was classy. He had a, always had a really nice scarf on. Silk scarves, I think, whenever he went out in the in the winter in New York. Okay, I'm gonna continue around here, yep. Okay. I think I'm doing this right, yes I am. Oh, my dog Jack is coughing. spot should be white there. There we go. I 
You know, my friend Ivy is in Australia and she is enjoying summertime. And I'm so jealous. <laughs> Now I covered something up that I didn't want to cover up, so I'm going to grab my 6B, my darkest, and I'm going to, okay, let's see, it was just above here, I didn't want to cover that up. I think I'll have to take a look after, but I may have made a mistake. But the good thing about charcoal is you can always cover it up. You know, like you can always take white. And, you know, if you made a mistake, you can cover it up. I'm just going to pause right now and take a good look at my reference photo. So I just want to show you what I did here. I put some black in here and I put a little kind of a circle there because I had accidentally covered that area and that's his eye. So that's that was pretty dark and I don't want to lose that. So I put my 6B in there right away just so I don't, you know, lose it. So I'm just going to continue adding this value. You see the two value differences? Once you start paying attention to that kind of thing, it's, it's easier to do it when you have a black and white photo to see all the different values. One exercise that I did um, was that I took a black and white photo and then, not a black and white photo, I took a color photo and I changed the hue so that it was all greens. And that way I could see the color um, values, which was really interesting. Because I'm someone who has a hard time seeing color value. I don't know why, but I, I have a really hard time with that. It's probably why I like to do black and white drawings, because I can actually see the values as, you know, compared to the color values, I find those really difficult to see. But like everything, I guess it just takes practice, right? When you have time to do that. I am taking some art classes along with all of my many other classes that I'm taking. Okay, wait, that's... Okay. Um... I'm taking an oil painting class, oil painting for portraits, and I've painted oils before, but what I used to do was just follow Bob Ross. So I was basically painting what, what Bob Ross was painting, and I wanted to branch out on my own at one point, so I started doing acrylics and watercolor, but then I never went back to oils. And I definitely want to. Okay, wait, let me just pay attention to what I'm doing here. That's that. Okay, we're good here. So I'm trying to improve my techniques and I'm taking courses on mastering your brush strokes and get my painting muscle built. along with all the psychology courses I'm taking and I'm also taking courses on how to use all the gazillion features in Photoshop. <laughs> There's so many. 
even the course doesn't, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't address everything in Photoshop because there's just too much. It would probably take six weeks to go through a course like that. Okay, so that's a little dark. We've got some, okay, that's a little darker. This is okay here. I think I've got all my values in there, but there is some, there will be some light in his hair here. So, but I'm going to wait to do that just now. I'm, I'm more interested in the lighter values. So I've got all that done. I'm going to start blending. Now, white charcoal is most easily blended with a blending stump. I've tried the um, cotton swabs. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second. I've tried using cotton swabs for white charcoal, but it just, just doesn't seem to like the cotton swabs. Or some people use paper towels or clean, not Kleenexes, but like, you know, bathroom tissue and stuff like that too. But I find that the best thing for the white charcoal is the blending stump, which this is. Black charcoal, I can use anything. Black charcoal loves the Q-tips or the cotton swabs. But white doesn't seem to like it. So what I'm doing is lightly blending in little circles. And I'm starting with the white areas. And then I'll do the light gray areas after. That's how I do it. I start with the lightest and I move my way through to the darkest. Then I add detail and finishing touches and stuff. So, I have a video on how to clean your blending stumps too. I am so guilty of not doing that. And you, you have to when you're using them a lot. It builds up on them, you know, like I could do this and wipe it off on the side. That's why I have paper towels all around me so I can do that. But it's really important to clean them once in a while. And honestly, I just do it with sandpaper. Some people, you know, whittle it off, but I don't do that. They do last a long time, though. Right. The tiny little areas of white around his eyes and in his ear, I'm going to use a different blending tool for that, so... Because this is a little too big for that, and I don't want to lose the detail. I'm doing this softly because, again, don't want to wreck my paper. And sometimes when you press too hard when blending, it kind of, it sets into the, the paper and you, you can't put anything more on top of it. So take your time and go very, very gently. Okay. A lot of the time, Jerry Orbach always looks like he's squinting, huh? Right. I'm already loving this. And the only thing that happens when I do <laughs> drawings is... I love how they look, and then I go and do something and I wreck the eyes, or I wreck the lips, or something like that. 
and then it takes me a half hour to fix it. <laughs> so I'm hoping I don't go and do that this time, because I really like how his eyes are looking, except for that one. I gotta fix that. One of my projects for 2024 is to try to do some live streams on this channel. To do some live art. I was thinking of doing it on Thursdays for the art date theme. have to figure out how I can do it because I want to be able to have my the focus on the drawing but I also want to be able to show my face so that I can smile at you guys <laughs> that would require two cameras which is okay because I have my phone and I have a webcam but it would also require a streaming software paid account as far as I, I think right now and that's not in the budget so I'll have to think of a loophole or a workaround or something like that but I think that would be a lot of fun because I used to enjoy watching uh, live streams for people who were painters and artists so this my friends is called a tortillon blender okay tortillon Tortillon means, you know, spinning, I guess. I'm um, going to do the little areas. Now, the Tortillon blenders are a lot harder than the blending stumps, so you have to go even lighter when you're blending that with a Tortillon. blending stump over here from my other pile. Make sure it's clean. Yep. Now I'm going to go ahead and blend in everything else that I have down here. Again, very softly. And I don't want lines. You see lines in between? So I'm going to try to blend those into each other. I want it to look smooth, like a smooth transition. That's why you have to wipe as you go so you don't, it doesn't bring all the dark stuff into your light area. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and do that. And I'll show you with the, uh, see it? There's some white in here so it probably doesn't blend as well. I'll show you after with the black charcoal how easy it is to use the cotton swab as a blender. With the softer, darker blacks, it works well. Because they're they're very dusty and they're soft, you know, so. Oops. I'll come in and blend the values all together after. I'm going to keep them separate for now. And again, I'm going to use a smaller blending tool for the areas around his eyes and his ear.
this worked out very well, the, um, the white and the HB together. I was wondering how I was going to pull that off to get this value, you know? Because the chalk, it, it was the right value, but it was just horrifying. <laughs> oh, the horror, the horror. It was such a pain in the butt to work with. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad I got rid of those. All right, looking good, Jerry. <laughs> okay, let me get a smaller tool here. Oh, this is a tiny little blending stump like that. I think I can use that for around his eyes. As long as I don't press down too hard, you can hear it scratching. Let me try this side here. Like I said, I'll blend it all together after when I have all my charcoal down. Okay, I think the eye is okay. I'm not going to touch it beyond that. I mean, I'm going to add the the darker values, but I'm not going to try to reshape it like I always try to do and then mess it up. Okay. It's looking good. Looking good. All right. So now I've got two more values. I've got, mm -hmm. well, let's see, the color wheel. We had white and we had maybe a value eight here. Now I've got a black for sure and probably like a value three. So I want to try to get a dark gray going on here. And with that, I can use probably my 2B, my 2B charcoal pencil. But what I'm going to do first, actually, I'm going to take my 6B, my darkest, because there is not too much black value in this. So I'll just fill in those areas with the 6B that are the darkest. And then the rest is all going to be 2B. Now with the 6B specifically, turn your pencil once in a while because these things break so quickly and don't press down too hard. Really, you don't. there's so much dust you might not be able to see it, but there is a lot of dust. There's black here. So if you're going to give your artwork a little huff and a puff to get the dust off, make sure there's no... You don't have any kids or pets around. It's not good for their little lungs. Not good for ours either, I always say, but we're not, it's not being blown in our faces, you know? So, if you have to, run over to the garbage and do it there. Okay, this one is pretty dark here. And you may have noticed again, I'm erasing my transfer lines here. All right, let's take a look at his tie.
as my stomach growls. <laughs> All right, let's take a quick look. Run a little bit. Okay, his eyes here, above there, that's that. I'm going to be putting this charcoal all the way around, like sort of, you know, to make it a little darker around him, but that's going to be at the very end. So I've got my 2B, and I'm just going to fill in everywhere else, everywhere else. And I'm going to keep, take a look once in a while, just to make sure I didn't forget any white areas or light gray areas or black areas. You see how sharp my pencil is? I'm not pressing down very hard, so fingers crossed it doesn't break. Kind of working top to bottom, left to right here because I'm right handed. I put those lines in for myself to help me with the direction of the hair so I wouldn't forget the direction the hair goes in, but I don't really need to see those anymore. So what are you guys up to? Is it winter for you? Is it summer? Or do you even have seasons where you are? I have a few friends who live in Hawaii and they don't really have any cold winter seasons, you know? That would be nice. <laughs> but then I'd probably complain that, you know, oh, I want a white Christmas. Okay, this eyebrow here as well. I say I wasn't going to touch the eye, I have to. There's something that I missed.
Okay. Now. nose. All oh, this is... Did I miss something under here? What is that value? That should be white. I did miss that. Okay. This is the shadow under his nose. He's got a little bump up on his lip here to indicate possibly a smile. <laughs> oh, when he smiled, man, he had those bright white teeth. He had great teeth. I wonder if they were real. <laughs> Hollywood teeth, I call them. in almost. Just finishing up here, then I can blend and put in a background and do a few details. I have to check my phone at some point because it stops filming for some reason at about 28 minutes. And I could be yakety yakety on and not knowing the phone actually stopped. Very annoying. Okay, time to blend. All right, so I'm going to just grab a q tip or whatever they're called, cotton swab, and I'm going to blend all of that black together. It does create a ton, a ton, ton, ton of dust. Not the blending, I mean the 6B. Actually, I'm not going to use this. I'm going to I'm going to stick to my blending stumps for this one. Where's my nice big one? Did I put it in the wrong one? No, here it is. I've got one here. So, here I go. Lightly blending. But again, for the areas around his eye, his eyes, and probably his mouth and nose. I'm going to use a smaller one. I don't want to lose the detail, as I've mentioned before. Now here it's that really dark black here that creates all that dust. Now what I usually do is I, <laughs> this sounds funny, but I kind of sweep it up. I take a, just, a, this is a dollar store flat brush. 
and I kind of sweep it all off and I blend it out into the sides just so I don't have to blow it all off my page and get it all over my desk, you know? And it kind of softens it up at the same time. Okay. Now let me find a small blending stump here. This tiny little one. I'll go around the eyes. Okay, now I'm not happy with that eye now. Um, okay. One thing at a time. doesn't seem to have any character there. It just looks like a blob. A demon eye. <laughs> just while I'm at this, hold on. Get some of that off there. I'm going to grab my little tortillon blender from my white pile because there's I added some white here before and this area here didn't get blended okay was there another spot that I added white I don't think so I'll come across it after okay so the lips So now what I need to do is deal with this eye. I'm going to grab my 4B, no, my 2B. Really, really look at that reference photo because it's not that round here on the bottom. It goes off a bit sort of like that on the side and a little bit here like that. And that may have just done it. Yeah, maybe. I'm going to grab my white and see if I can kind of Straighten that out a little bit. And I'll blend that. Okay. I'm thinking of doing a little what do you guys think about that? A little into his eye there a little bit. Does that look goofy? Because in the photo you can't really see that, you know? But I'll take my HB and how about I just go over that a little bit so it's not so bright. So it's kind of there in the background. Yeah, what the heck. I'm going to leave that. That's my own special touch. <laughs> Okay, so now what I want to do is put some highlights in his hair because his hair isn't like, you know, Ken doll black. It's, uh, it's got some, some stuff in it. Stuff. You guys know what I mean, right? You get the idea. Now, when I say with my black, I just mean with the blending stump that I use for my black charcoal, my black chocolate. <laughs> and I'm kind of blending in the direction that I drew the lines, okay? gives it a little more interest than just a piece of a black band on the top of his head, you know. 
It's subtle, but it's there. All right, now what I need to do is blend the entire thing. Just to make sure it's all nicely blended because we still have those bands of values all over the place. And I don't want to, I'm going to grab the white and I'm going to try to blend those two together so that it's not so obvious. And here I'm putting a little more pressure on my blending stump, okay? Because I don't intend to add more charcoal to this. I really want it to blend nicely. Okay. I might add some more white to Jerry's forehead here. Actually to the whole nose area. Everywhere. Lightly blend that first, where the eyes are. I want that to be brilliantly white, you know? Okay. Let me blend this all in together. Just circles. So now I'm going to blend everything, <laughs> just everything. Like I said, putting a little more pressure on the blending stump now. But I am going to be careful around his eyes. I don't want to lose any detail there. so. I'm just going around his face. Can't forget his ear. And then neglected his ear there a little bit. Just blending it all together. Let me get this on the side here. I don't want to see any circles, you know? I want to see little bits and pieces, but like that, I don't want to see three dots there. Just want it to be kind of subtle. I don't like that. Okay, where's my to be? To be or not to be? Here it is, okay. Not, I don't like this at all. I want it to be dark here. See how that looks. I think that's a little better, but I want to take my 6B. Get rid of that completely. I don't like how that looked at all. 
don't know why I put that in there, but okay, let's get rid of that dust right away. blending. Let's see. Oh, there's a lot of 6B on that. I gotta be careful. Okay. So. detail. Okay. I was over here somewhere. I'll go in with the little blender for that area. I don't mind keeping the shapes. They don't have to be all blended in together because the idea is that it's his clothing, right? So I don't mind if there are sharp edges on this on this area here, but I do see something I don't like here, so I'm just gonna get rid of that. Don't like that. It was too white for me. Okay. It's looking good. I'm going to grab my tortillon and blend all this area here together. Of course, I want to keep all the highlights. done. Pretty happy with this. I hope you appreciate this, Jerry. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to step away from it for a moment and I'll be right back. I am pretty happy with this. So I'm going to take my 6B, my darkest, and I'm just going to lightly, lightly, lightly shade all around him. And if there are areas where I want to erase my tracing lines, like here, I'm going to put the 6B right over that. I don't want to see that. But I am going very lightly because I don't want to see any you know, lines, so. This part is completely optional. I mean, it is black paper after all, but I just like to sort of finish it up. I do this with all of my all of my drawings, even when I'm doing graphite, I always end up putting graphite all around <laughs> the page. 
because I, I feel like it finishes it up a bit. Because there is a slight hue difference. Yeah. I find that this paper has, if this makes any sense, it has a little yellow to it almost. Okay, let's see. Good old blending stumper. Wait, why don't we just try using a paintbrush? That works. And what it does is it takes the charcoal and it spreads it around too at the same time for any spots that maybe are in between, you know? Like here, there looks like lines. There's areas that I applied charcoal and in between there are spaces because I did do it like this. So using the brush actually fills those little spaces up. And if you're not happy with it, you can go over it with the blending stump after, which is probably what I'm going to do, but I'll see. I want to make sure all of that dust is incorporated into the painting or the drawing. And I will go over it quickly with the blending stump just to make sure it's all nicely blended, but I'm doing it really, really soft. Because you can see, you can see the strokes, unfortunately. So I'll just stick to the, stick to the paintbrush. And I think a flat, or is that a filbert? I don't know. Um, you don't want to have a paintbrush that has long you want a flat brush, not a round brush. Otherwise it won't blend very well. So I'm just gonna go over here Smooth out anything that needs to be smoothed out, leaving the eyes alone though, and leaving the mouth alone. And there it is, my friends. There's my masterpiece. <laughs> I'm very happy with this. I, uh, I haven't drawn a portrait in a long time, actually. I think the last time I drew one was Sinead O'Connor when she passed away, and that was a while ago, so I needed to get back into it. It's very relaxing for me. I enjoy art so much, and I hope that you guys enjoyed this lesson, and if you followed along, please let me know if you post it somewhere. Go to my blog. I'll leave the link in the description below, and join in on our art date. Join in the blog hop. We'd love to see what you've done. And leave me a comment because I do read all your comments and I love your comments. If you have any suggestions, questions, anything like that, I appreciate all of your comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe, my friends. And if you don't want to miss any of my little short videos or my very long real-time art lessons, click on that notification bell. I really appreciate you, my friends. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time, okay? Bye.